folks, this is Fernando, doing our video for the Martial Survivalist, and today I'd like to address a topic that was brought to my attention by a review that I received of my book. My book is The Modern Survival Manual, Surviving the Economic Collapse, available in Amazon. The link is going to be somewhere there below. Um, about half my book, I believe, you know, pretty much almost half my book, I guess, is regarding security, crime, self-defense. These things uh, I address uh, heavily uh, because it's maybe the thing that disrupts life the most after something like what happened in Argentina. After a real economic collapse, uh, the amount of, of crime on the streets, everything from being mugged, kidnapped, home invasions, these are all things that it still today carry on in Argentina. 15 years later, people are living with this a kind of stuff, with this reality. Now, um, I have the opportunity of traveling around the world and living in different places. And today I'm living in Spain, uh, a developed nation, a country where m many of these things that were, uh, a matter of fact, in Argentina simply do not happen here. People don't live with that kind of stress, of concern, of getting mud, getting shot on the streets, getting carjacked, getting kidnapped. It's simply the stuff that they just um, don't uh, don't live with. Yeah. And great for them. I mean, that's that's fantastic. If you're someone that is fortunate enough, that's uh, that's great. But in Argentina, and if you're watching um, from from there and you live there you know it as well you simply have a standard that other people do not understand in in if you live in Argentina you it simply does not compute in, in your brain to leave your front door unlocked or la leave windows open or you know li even living in a house that doesn't have burglar bars in your window that that's the kind of stuff that you would be the only one in the neighborhood that doesn't have that kind of security in your house or, or having a, a glass front door. I've never, in over 30 years of living in Argentina, I cannot remember uh, a house that had a, a glass front door simply because someone with a stone that same night would, would put it through the window and walk into the house, mug the place, and, you know, a home invasion would be extremely easy. It would, the kind of crime that you have in Argentina, you have to think in a, in a different level. You live in what people of developed nations would consider pretty much bunkered with a pretty solid door, if not a, a, an armored door, which is pretty common in Argentina, uh, bars in your windows. And the window of opportunity for criminals is when you leave your house in the morning or you come back at night uh, and you're worried about getting, getting uh, caught in that window of opportunity for criminals. In those moments, they put a gun to your head force you inside your house, steal everything from you. That's the level of crime that you have to live with over there. Now, hopefully you don't have to experience something like that firsthand. But for those of us that, that have experienced it firsthand and, and learned from that and, uh, and trained accordingly and you know, gathered information and uh, researched this in, in ways that a lot of people simply do not understand, um, I at least see that there's a lot of misinformation out there. I see, especially within our prepper survival community, there's a lot of you know fantasies about what's going to be happening, or uh, once the balloon goes up, or shit hits the fan, the economy crashes, we're moving to our retreat and farm or whatnot, defending our place from there, or maybe it's about, sometimes you, you read it in, in, in a novel about if it's not about defending a, um, a homestead and no one ever getting shot or even when that happens barely so uh, or moving across the country in an epic uh, journey uh, that's not how it works in, in the real world in the real world and this is something that i've said before uh, when i get asked about what is life like after an economic collapse or even when i research similar situations in our countries in our times of, of history it's, the answer is, it's the same as what you already know, only worse, all right? Get that in your head. If you're a prepper, if you're a survivalist, it's gonna be the same as what you already know, only worse. You're not gonna be quitting your job and going to your friend's farm retreat or your own cabin in the woods, defending it from zombie raiders or whatnot. You're not gonna be doing any of that. You're gonna be going up to work every morning. It's just gonna be crappier. You're still gonna be having your pays to bill, your, your bills to pay, and your wage is not gonna be covering it nearly as much as it, as it used to because of inflation. Maybe you lost your job. So chances are, 
in a realistic economic collapse, chances are that you'll have to sell your retreat to pay for the bills that your wage no longer covers. And that's an economic collapse, all right? Um, but I, I got a, a very interesting comment uh, about my book. Uh, usually I have, I have a five star uh, reviews of my book. People really like it, which I'm uh, very thankful for. And if you haven't uh, left a review on Amazon, I always appreciate, of course, a, a five star review. But the last one that I got was a four star review. And I read it and I thought it was pretty interesting because there's maybe a lot of people that think this way. There's a lot of folks out there that, especially in the United States where you have a, um, a firearm is easier uh, to obtain it's not that hard for you to get a concealed carry license there the thing is that a lot of folks maybe even have a gun but they don't know how to use it and they don't they don't know how to actually use it they haven't uh, properly trained so as to use their firearm they don't have the legal knowledge of how they're supposed to this is very very dangerous that you're not required to have these two does not mean that you should not have them all right that makes sense you should get proper training in self-defense shooting if you're going to be carrying a firearm that's essential just like you have your uh, your license for driving you really should not be out there with a gun if you haven't received adequate proficient training on how to use it second you should have the knowledge of how to legally use it as well because it's very clear that a lot of folks out there simply have no clue whatsoever uh, of how uh, to use a gun how to legally use a gun and this is how it ends up happening that people shoot uh, someone just because they thought they might be robbing or uh, in a confused episode or, or accidents or uh, women that had a this lady that had a a gun in her purse and the baby pulled it out and shot himself all these things happen because of lack of training because of lack of knowledge on how to proficiently use the, the firearm and legally doing so. So, uh, finally getting to the point, and I think this is, you know, maybe some of you folks understand it, but maybe it's something that some of you don't. Uh, what do you do when sent to jail for self-defense injuries inflicted? This is by Benjamin Castle. And he says, Furfell wrote an excellent review, it's actually a book that I wrote, but he says, Furfell wrote an excellent review of how he handled the difficult years in Argentina, but I have really liked to see some moral debate about whether killing someone is the best idea in some cases, considering that if you go to jail, then you will not be around to continue to defend your family. Well, when you shoot someone in self-defense and you kill him, that's not all, that's not just uh, a good idea. It's something that you do when you don't have any other option. Uh, shooting in self-defense is the last option that you possibly have. Shooting in self-defense is what you do when nothing else is, is in the equation. When the only thing that you have is someone that's trying to kill you, very important, and we'll be getting back to that in a second, and the only thing that you can do is to stop that person uh, from inflicting this uh, uh, harm on you. All right. And if that happens, uh, that's called self-defense. And I'm going to be talking about stuff in Argentina, but it applies to many other nations around the world as well. Pretty much any half-civilized country around the world will, will have uh, a legal aspect that includes self-defense, legal self-defense. You know, depends on where you are, but basically that's how it goes. He really could have explored injuring the opponent by disabling a leg or something. No, awful, clueless idea. It would have been really great if he could have said what to do when attacked in different places. Well, I actually cover a lot of that in my, in my book about uh, uh, vehicles and carjackings and such. Home street car shopping. Overall, though, I, I, it was a, a great read about his personal thoughts. I really like the way that he felt that killing someone in self-defense is definitely worth it, but could really need to... Yeah, it's not that it's worth it. It's that, it's that killing in self-defense, if you actually end up doing that, you should only be doing it when it's the last option that you have available. It's not the first thing that you do. You, you have... Uh, a number of options before that. You try to avoid uh, dangerous places, dangerous uh, encounters. Uh, when you see um, a potentially dangerous situation, you try getting away from that. You know, there's a number of things that you do before actually using lethal force, okay? And here he goes. Uh, overall, though, it was 
I really liked different worth it. Uh, he felt that couldn't, but could really need to uh, back it up by providing that the chances of going to jail afterwards are nil. Uh, I, I'm not going to be providing that because, you know, it's impossible to do so. It really depends on a number of factors. The key aspect of it is uh, to use um, lethal force when it's the only option available and you are in actual true fear of your life. This applies to Argentina, this applies to pretty much all our countries that I know of. Maybe murder for self-defense in Argentina is normal and acceptable, not so much in our countries. Well, it seems like Benjamin is kind of a, a dick because, no, it, it, murder is not acceptable in Argentina, uh, Benjamin. Um, and, you know, I, a number of things so wrong here. Um, self-defense is not murder. That's uh, true for Argentina, and that's true for many other, most other countries, most other civilized countries. There's a huge difference between murder and, and self-defense. When you use a uh, lethal force in self-defense, and this is for Argentina, but also for the uh, United States and most other uh, civilized countries, you're, you're using lethal force when you feel that your life is at risk when you are certain that the person that broke into your house he's going to kill you the only option that you have is pulling the trigger on that on that gun if not you're gonna be dying it happens on the street as well you're you're in the street someone is attacking you is trying to kill you and you kill that person in self-defense you're in the mall there's a mass shooter there's a terrorist he's shooting and you're afraid of your life you shoot to kill, you shoot to stop that person because if not, you're certain he's gonna be killing you. In most countries, as always check in your own specific country, but in general, in most countries, there's also a, a legal frame in which you can shoot um, to kill when there's an illegitimate, uh, an, uh, an illegitimate uh, attempt to kill someone else if, for example, if there's a, a terrorist trying to kill third parties, in most countries you have somewhat of a legal frame for you to use lethal force against it. Now it's important to notice that it has to be an uh, illegitimate uh, attack, an illegitimate uh, attack to that person's life. For example, if there's a police officer shooting someone, you cannot intervene in that situation and shoot the police officer because he's actually doing his job there. Maybe he's shooting someone that is, uh, you know, a uh, and someone that is involved in something else, a police officer trying to stop someone, you cannot shoot the police officer because he's killing someone. A, a terrorist, a, a mass shooter, someone that is killing innocent people. In Again, in most countries, depends on places, but in most countries, there's a legal um, a frame for you to actually exercise self-defense in the name of those uh, innocent victims that are, being, uh, that are being killed, all right? Now, about uh, shooting to injure which is an awful, awful idea that will land you in jail in most, again, in most countries, shooting to injure on purpose. That is the kind of thing that lands you in jail, not shooting to kill. So uh, I'm doing this video because I know of people that think like uh, Benjamin here. Um, usually it's people that have no clue, no idea of, uh, of, uh, of, the, of their local laws or ideas of practical self-defense. Uh, what I'm going to be explaining now and what I've been saying so far is based not just uh, on, on, it's not my opinion, it's what I've learned and what I've been taught uh, in different uh, degrees of, of uh, self-defense uh, shooting classes, courses, uh, uh, giving by experts in this in this field by judges that actually judge people this is what what uh, judges told me what uh, district attorneys uh, told me and explained to me of how it works so the thing is uh, you always shoot to stop the threat you always shoot to stop the person attacking you this is what I explained in my book where I say page 152, shoot first and shoot as much as needed. Shoot first and shoot as much as needed so as to stop this uh, illegal attack on your life or your loved one's life, all right? Why is it that you don't shoot to injure someone? 
I once someone told me, uh, well, if you're so good shooting, why don't you shoot the gun, the guy's gun out of his hand? You know, and this wasn't from some idiot. This was from some uh, half intelligent person that was genuinely had no idea what he was saying. But you know, the kind of thing that some people think. Uh, you never shoot to injure because of basically three reasons and you always shoot center of mass uh, you have different drills you know you can start going up or shooting to the head but you in general you shoot center of mass and you shoot to stop you shoot to kill with a lethal weapon for basically three reasons the first one is a tactical one it's practically impossible for even an expert shooter to in a dynamic situation where you're moving where the attacker is moving and shooting back at you or attacking you with a with, with lethal intent to actually shoot a limb on the move it's, it's almost impossible it's practically impossible so first of all it's almost impossible to do this about shooting to injure someone you know that's why you shoot center of mass which is where you have a, a greater um, chance of hitting your target right second uh, regarding a moral aspect and this is closely linked to the legal aspect as well but morally speaking why are you using a lethal weapon against this person I mean if you think about it morally as well I would only try to uh, stop someone in, in the fastest possible way which means killing someone I would only try to kill someone when that person is trying to kill me or one of my loved ones, one of my family members. That's morally the only reason why I would try to kill someone when the only option left is getting killed myself or having my wife, my, my children killed. That's morally the only uh, right answer to using lethal force against someone. Uh, finally, legally, it's closely linked to this because legally against in most countries check your own laws but in most countries legally you only use lethal force when genuinely afraid of your life someone broke into your house uh, he has a he has a gun you're afraid it's the middle of the night you shoot him because you think this guy broke into my house with a gun he's probably gonna be killing me he's gonna be killing my kids so I shoot to kill him right I shoot to stop him as effectively as possible right now let's suppose if you do what old Benjamin here said about shooting the limb let's suppose the conversation and this is a, an actual conversation that I had with a district attor attorney that said okay so you shoot someone in, in, in the limb right this is what was, what was being explained to us as why you never shoot to injure someone broke into your house you shoot him in the leg right and once the police show up which they always do you're brought to a judge and you start explaining yourself why did you shoot the guy in the leg why did you shoot him in the in the arm uh, well because I wanted to stop him well but why didn't you shoot him in the in the chest well because I didn't what would be your explanation for not shooting center of mass what would be your explanation for not shooting to stop immediately that person any explanation that you have will be incorrect any explanation that you will have will be uh, I shoot him in the leg because I didn't want to kill him then if you didn't want to kill him then you were clearly not as afraid of your life as you should have been so as to use a lethal weapon chances are you know everything is possible but chances are that if you shoot someone to injure him a judge there's a very good chance it's actually much greater than if, it is if you shoot to kill that the judge will see it as an illegitimate use of force or excessive use of force against someone that you honestly didn't think was trying to kill you right well I shot him in the leg because I thought that maybe he was a bad guy but maybe he, uh, he was someone that just jumped over the fence to catch a frisbee or something like that or I'm not really that sure why he shot him in the leg you know that's the mess that will effectively land you in jail first of all the thing that Benjamin was worried about that's the thing that lands you in jail is second it, it's the kind of thing that it leaves you bankrupt because now the person that you is shot in the leg even if he's a criminal and this happens all the time even if he's a criminal if you shoot to injure him he's gonna be saying well I wasn't going to be harming anyone. Clearly, he wasn't uh, afraid of, uh, of his life because if not, he, he would have shot to kill me and, and he's saying something else. Uh, I was just confused. I just wanted to ask for a glass of water. Whatever excuse there is. But this guy now has a bullet in his, in his arm. He has a bullet in his leg. He cannot work. And you will have to compensate that man 
or that woman. You will have to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for injuring, for excessive use of force, for, for illegitimate use of force against someone that you should not have used. Uh, some people, you know, and you sometimes hear this, will say that besides all this, you shoot uh, to stop because that's how you only are left with your side of the story. Uh, that's a morally a questionable uh, answer to say the least, right? What is, uh, what is true is that morally speaking, you should only use a lethal weapon in a lethal manner when you're genuinely, absolutely 100% sure that the only option left is dying yourself. You only stop someone using lethal force when you're afraid, truly, genuinely, 100% sure that this other guy is uh, trying to kill you. You honestly believe that, so that's why you use lethal force against someone, and that's why you never, legally speaking, morally speaking, tactically, tactically speaking as well, never shoot to injure someone, okay? Folks, it's gonna be all for now. Remember to subscribe, and see you on our next video. Have a great day.